This is Trace Fidicaro, founder of QZ Industries, author of QZ Tray. Today we're going to be doing the third in a series of signing tutorials. Signing is our licensing component. It allows us to know who's talking to the software. It also creates a revenue stream for us so we can continue to exist. If you did not buy the premium version of QZ Tray, this tutorial will still work, um, but you'll have to have your own certificate and private key, um, and that is out of the scope of this tutorial, but the rest of the steps here will work. The first prerequisite of this video is QZ Tray. Uh, QZ Tray is generally installed in program files here. Um, our code examples are inside this demo folder. And uh, you might notice that the branding on this QZ Tray version is a little bit different than the one that you use. Maybe even the menus are different. Um, it's a bleeding edge version at the time of recording this video. Um, by the time you watch this video, it might be our stable release. But uh, this tutorial will work for 2.0. 2.1 and if you're still on 1.9 we suggest that you upgrade but the tutorial can be adapted to work for 1.9 as well. So when I talk about C Sharp from signing what I'm really talking about is our licensing component requires a private key and that private key generally is protected on the web server. To be protected, the web server needs to be able to do use that private key to create some of our signing and Keeping it in C Sharp allows you to prevent that from being exposed to the web browser. However, <laughs> .NET uh, has its own ways of having the browser talk back to C Sharp. So this tutorial was quite a bit to get working. Um, hopefully it makes sense to you. Uh, we put a lot of time into creating this tutorial. Uh, we're going to be working from this little, uh, these little cliff notes here that I made for myself. And what these cliff notes will do is I'll be able to quickly tell you how we got my environment set up and then we'll get some code. Um, if you want to just jump straight to the code, it is uh, in the comments. It's right here as well. And it's in the comments, so just, or uh, in the description. <laughs> just scroll down to the description of the YouTube video um, and then you can click on it and you can get the, the code snippets right away. So, two components that I installed before starting this tutorial. One is IIS and the other is ASP.NET. Um, I selected them from the uh, add remove optional components inside Windows. Now those steps might not be necessary. I'm using Visual Studio 2019. They may check those boxes for us once it's installed. I'm just letting you know. Um, most of you already have a web server set up. You already have some version of IIS running and you have some version of ASP already. So these steps really aren't that important if you already have your environment up and going. Um, it's, they're more for internal training purposes uh, as we try to support and reproduce the environment that you're using. We are using a new version of Visual Studio, Visual Studio 2019. Um, when we installed it, it asked us what, what we wanted to do with the IDE. We said workloads, ASP.NET, and web development. And uh, when we start a new project, there's some things that we got to click as well. And the reason that I mentioned this is because it was not intuitive to me. There's a lot of... There's a lot of things I'm going to describe that were just not intuitive to us. We're not a uh, C Sharp. We're not a uh, ASP.NET shop. And uh, I, I really want to point them out because they're not intuitive. <laughs> it took us a while to figure them out. So hopefully it'll save people some time um, as long as they follow along. So I'm going to open up our code snippets here. Um, also, I'm going to fire up Visual Studio. It takes a little bit to open up. Now, Visual Studio will be using IIS Express behind the scenes. I'm going to remove this guy. Uh, that's <laughs> when I was trying all this before. I'm going to be creating a new project. Now, right in my cliff notes, you'll notice I said make sure to select C Sharp. We got snagged on this. When you're doing a ASP.NET web application, not a core application, although that may work as well, the first one that lists is Visual Basic, and we don't want that. Instead, we want to scroll down, and we want to do the one for C Sharp. Give this an intuitive name. 
Um, we click this checkbox here to place uh, the folders together. That's up to you. That won't won't impact the uh, the project. And we're using web forms. We may later create a tutorial for uh, MVC, but for right now we're using web forms. Now, if you notice, part of this tutorial talks about web methods uh, or page methods, and I have to minimize everything here. Um, page methods, they are Microsoft's way of having your JavaScript talk to your backend controller. So it's how you get stuff to JavaScript that's running in C Sharp. The reason that we're focusing on page methods here is it really makes the process easier. You're probably used to using Ajax uh, through jQuery or through fetch, dollar sign dot Ajax, uh, maybe making post requests. This example will work, but you'll have to change it just a little bit for that. I did not find it intuitive. The reason is, is that the controllers, sometimes they end in .aspx, sometimes they have a path. Page methods really solved all of those problems for us, and it was a very, very quick addition to the project, and I'll show you how we did that. Okay, we don't need our project overview here. And now I'm going to kind of ditch my notes. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything here. Yep, I'm going to ditch my notes here. And I'm going to go right to the code. So this first step, the auto redirect mode, this was very difficult for us to figure out. Sometimes our, our Ajax requests, our page methods um, return values would have HTML in them. Um, and it seemed to be a problem with the browser um, caching some of the redirects. So in order to fix that, we turn redirect mode to off. That's set up in routeconfig.cs, which is inside the app start folder. And we just change the word permanent to off. Okay, that's going to save us some headaches. Close that file out. We're going to jump over the code real quickly here, and we're going to come down to this uh, and it turning on page methods. Page methods was really as easy as just putting it inside the script manager inside your site.master. So we're going to do that as well. So right here where script manager is, enable page methods is equal to true. Now that does quite a few things behind the scenes. It actually injects a little bit of JavaScript into your page so that page methods can, can become available. But when you see how simple the code is using page methods, I think you'll agree that this tutorial was best with that. Again, dollar sign dot Ajax will work, uh, but you're going to have to change your calls just a little bit. So page methods is really what we recommend uh, for simplicity's sake. Now, in the previous tutorials, what I would do is I would open up the folder to QZTray and I would copy the whole demo directory. That's not as easy in using .NET, and that's because Visual Studio tries to build your web page for you, and we're under the impression that most clients are building their pages directly through Visual Studio. So instead, we're just going to cherry pick the pieces of QZ Tray that we need for this to work. So this will be a little different than the other tutorials. You won't actually see our full-blown sample when we're done. If you do want to bring in components from the sample, feel free to, uh, but we're going to be working straight from the default uh, landing page that you would get when you create a new project. Actually, to that point, let's make sure that landing page is working. I'm going to click play right here. While that's loading, the components that we are going to need from uh, the QZ Tray folder are QZTray.js and dependencies. The oh, my browser just loaded here. QZ Tray and dependencies. These are the only two that we'll be needing. This is what I get for trying to multitask. Copy these. And we're going to be putting those in the uh, in a folder called JS in the root of our web server. One thing that took quite a while writing this tutorial was waiting for IIS to fire up. Um, in between tests, it can be slow. Uh, changes to C-sharp code will require the page to be reloaded, um, usually the stop and start button inside Visual Studio. However, changes to the ASPX code, the JavaScript, the HTML, um, those you can just click refresh. It's pretty nice. As you can see, this does take a little while to load. 
and there it is there's our default page so now we know with those two minor changes that we made the page is still working now I want to get to the web root and I want to paste in that JavaScript so to get to the web root you right click open folder in file explorer and right here is our web root and now we just want to paste our files here we're gonna make a new folder called JS and then we're gonna paste in our files so we got the QZ tray and then the other two dependencies are SHA256 and RSVP some people are thinking well hey uh, maybe I don't want to use RSVP for promises if you're that far ahead and you know which promises you want to use use whatever you want we support overrides we have an API override section inside our wiki go ahead and knock yourself out with that also if you do like using the built-in SHA256 inside your web browser you can use that as well it does require HTTPS but for simplicity's sake our two dependencies we're just copying and pasting them in here so that way you don't have to think about it we do have to import those into our page and what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back into our demo folder and we're going to copy the tags directly out of our sample.html where we're importing those scripts. And if you look right here, here's our required scripts. And we're just going to copy this, close him out, and we're going to be putting those inside our page. The page that we're going to be working from, in our case, is going to be default.aspx, and the code behind is going to be the default.aspx.cs. If you double-click default.aspx, you'll get inside where you can actually add stuff like HTML and JavaScript. We're going to be just pasting our script tags in here. So here's our QZ required scripts. And just to make sure those are working properly, we're just going to call qz.websocket.connect. We're going to see what happens when we call that. If these are being imported properly, you'll at least see a dialog pop up. Now, like I said before, we're not changing any C-sharp code. We can just refresh the browser. And there we go. You can see the action required prompt comes up. Uh, of course, this red shield is what we want to get rid of. Um, and that's what this tutorial is for. It's to get rid of these pop-ups. But at least now we know that QZ Tray is properly connecting from our page to the QZ Tray software. Okay, now for the signing component. I'm going to go back to our code snippet here. So we're going to have two components here. One's going to be what lives in JavaScript, and the other one is going to be what lives in C Sharp. I'm going to start off with the C Sharp code. There is some imports that we're going to do. I'm going to paste those in first. So we're going to be opening, in our case, default.aspx.cs. If you have your own class structure, feel free to use it here. Uh, this demo is using default because it greatly simplifies it for our own internal training purposes, and it also allows a web developer to be able to just fire up a plain web page, get everything working, and then port it over to his own system. Now you'll notice here, stuff is starting to get underlined in purple inside this editor. It may be a different color in other versions of Visual Studio. That purple is warning us that these changes aren't going to go into effect until we restart our web server. So I'm actually going to click stop here. We're going to stop the code. That way we know if we actually have syntax problems or if it's because it's still running. Okay, now we're going to grab the next chunk of code here. It looks like it wants to double space all of our code. Let's see if I can fix that.
I'm going to click raw on this so that way we don't get those additional new lines. Copy. Maybe, hopefully, there we go, that's a little bit better. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to point out here is this storage flags. This first storage flag here, machine key set, this guy caused us a lot of grief here trying to reproduce this uh, for us internally. So this is a, um, we have our own code workaround and you'll see it lower here. What it does is it actually strips that out. Uh, it seems to fix it for people that are running um, IIS Express. So uh, if you're curious why that guy's there, that's what it's for. It looks like it doesn't like web method. I must have forgotten import here. Oh, I see what's going on. <laughs> Paste it into the wrong location. So let's fix that. Just bear with me here. Apparently, I don't know how to copy and paste inside this IDE either. This, yeah, see, it, it, it deselects it as I scroll. Um, so instead, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete all of this, and I'm going to paste it back in through the web. Okay, let's try this again. So the reason this was giving me a hard time is because I was not inside the class. So let's try this again. Now we're up inside the class, which is good. Still doesn't like web method. Uh, one thing that's nice about this version of Visual Studio, I don't remember this in older versions, but this will actually give you, it'll, it'll say show potential fixes. And in this case, it'll actually add the using for you up at the top. So that's something that should have been in the, uh, the code snippet. It'll be fixed by the time um, you watch this video. Okay, there is our C-sharp code. If you notice, the C-sharp code does reference something called private key.pfx. We do assume that you're a premium subscriber and that you've already downloaded these files. There will be a digital certificate and a private key.pfx. The PEM is not needed for this tutorial. And the public key you can hang around for renewing, um, but that is not needed for this tutorial. We're only going to be using the private key.pfx and the digital certificate.txt. Now, it's good practice to get the private key and place it in a location where people browsing your website would never be able to see. So in the case of our web server, the web server is installed, if you remember, it's under your home directory, source, repos, and then there's your demo, uh, there's your, your, your code directory. Or you can get to it just as easily by right-clicking here and then open the folder in Explorer. What we're going to do is we're going to go up one directory, and right here we're going to create a new directory called private. This is completely outside of our uh, web root, and we're going to paste our private key here. Now you can put it anywhere you'd like. You can put it on the C drive. You can put it on uh, on another volume. Um, but we do recommend that you keep it out of your web root so that people can't just download it. It's our licensing component. It's also the only security you have to know that it is actually you talking back to the software. So please put it in a safe location. So this path to private key we actually already have ways to calculate this here. We're going to go to the web root, which is the slash. And then we're going to get the parent directory of that. Um, for some reason with .NET, the parent of a folder, <laughs> in this case, uh, ends up being... I believe it's because it's, it's the ASPX page that you're on, so it ends up just bringing... Uh, it, you have to get, I guess in, in short, you have to get the parent of the parent. And uh, we do that. And we're going to load the private key from there. 
Um, in our case, password is blank. All of our keys from our portal have a blank password for convenience. If you do have a password, you can set it right here. So that's pretty much all we'll be doing from the C sharp side. Now here inside our script tags, we have to set up our licensing component. Now we've already provided these code samples for you. Here's the set signature promise example. We're actually going to click raw again so we don't get those extra new lines. Okay, there is our set signature promise. Now this looks pretty simple, but it's actually doing something um, that's pretty neat. Um, what it's doing is it's calling page methods. Page methods was included when we added it to our site.master. And it says, hey, page methods, call a, a function that's declared in C Sharp called sign message. It's actually that easy. And since sign message only takes one parameter request, the first parameter is request. In this case, we call it to sign JavaScript side, but that's our request. And then the way page methods works is the first function, uh, the, 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 the first value after, after what you pass into the function, the first value is what you call when it's successful. And then the second one is what you call when it fails. So it's actually as easy as calling page methods, dot our C sharp function, pass it in our string value, call this if it's successful, call this if it's a failure. Seems simple is simple. Um, there's a lot going on there. In this case, when it calls resolve, it's actually going to pass in whatever is returned inside this function, which is going to be our signature. Okay, we also need to get our certificate set up. So to get the certificate set up, we're actually going to place that right inside the web root. The reason that we're comfortable doing that is because our certificates can be shared. Um, there is no security issues with exposing your certificate. The certificate's exposed to QZ tray, so you can actually grab it right out of the logs, and we're just going to copy it here. So we're going to go to our downloads, we're going to get our certificate, and we're going to copy it right to that web root. So the code snippet we're going to need for the certificate is right here, set certificate promise. The version of Visual Studio that we have comes bundled with jQuery. jQuery is what gives us the dollar sign dot Ajax. I know before we were talking about using page methods, and if you'd like, you can load the certificate from the controller um, through C Sharp code, and then you can call page methods on it. But in this case, it's much simpler for us to just pull it straight from the web server. Since the certificate ends in .txt. The default file filter for IIS will serve this up to the browser, so we can just load it. There's one major downside to doing it this way, and that's that text files are cached by the browser. They're cached pretty strictly, so the only way to make sure that this certificate is updated when it changes, and it will, um, the way that our licensing works is it changes annually unless you buy more than one year. The only way that's ever going to be updated is to force the refreshing of the cache. So we say cache false, do not cache it. Data type text, that's just to be safe so it doesn't return it as a JSON object, and this will load our certificate to the browser. So what we should have right now is, is we should have function uh, licensing setting up set up in our browser. However, we're not actually calling QZ tray for anything, so we have no way to validate it. So that's going to be the final step: is to put in our unit test. It's going to connect in, and it's going to call something that would normally raise that second dialog, that signing dialog. Okay, and now I think we're ready to hit play. Hopefully, everything works. Sometimes while that's going, I like to close out some of my old tabs. In this case, I'm going to close out my other instance. And I'm going to go back to our source code here while I'm waiting. It looks like it's starting to load. 
And like I said, every time you change C sharp code, it does have to restart the website. Uh, it's just the way that it is. It takes a little bit. Ignore that message. That was our previous page being disconnected. Okay, so the first thing that I want to show you here looks like the IDEs. Yep, there we go. The IDE likes to refresh when you click play, so sometimes it'll still focus. It's one of my pet peeves about how uh, Visual Studio works, but hey, it is what it is. Okay, so if you see here, it says QZ demo page wants to connect to QZ trade, and that's great. Um, if you're using our demo, usually this will say local host when you first try it out, and you want the local host to be replaced with uh, the name of your, uh, whatever your license was it, was uh, was issued to, or whatever you typed in when you created the certificate from our portal. So QZ demo page is excellent here. We're going to click OK. And it didn't get any further. I would have expected it to get into the next call, but it looks like something happened, and let's see if we can find out what's going on. I see a continue here, but I don't see a place where it's halted, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Oh, here we go. Okay. And normally, I'm not sure why it's not doing it this time. Normally, when it... Oh, okay, there's our exception. This is probably why it stole focus, and that's because it got into this uh, this unhandled exception here. These exceptions are, are a little bit different than what I'm used to programming in other languages, but if you're running in debug mode... Visual Studio will actually prompt the exception to the screen. Now, I know there's ways to turn this off inside Visual Studio. I kind of like it during debugging because that way you don't have to try parsing this from some, uh, some log somewhere. So what it's telling us is it can't find the file specified, so we must have made a typo when we set up our private key. And actually, I can see it right now. Our private key is inside a folder called private and I forgot to type that in. So now we do have to start it back up again, so this will be a second. The good thing is our certificate did come through. I'm going to close out our old page while the new one loads. But our certificate did come through, so the certificate component is right here, the set certificate promise. This is our last disconnect happening. Uh, uncleanly, so you can ignore that. So our certificate came through fine, and that's great. It meant it loaded the digital certificate.txt. Now what we're really hoping for is that second pop-up to show up um, using this sign methods. Okay, our page is loaded. We're going to click allow. Great. So what you'll see here is you get QZ demo again. And now it's talking about connecting to printers. Anything that we consider privileged, printing, talking to printers, USB ports, serial ports, all of those will raise a dialog. The first dialog that you see is the certificate, and then the second dialog that you see is the signature. In this case, it's talking to printers and it's asking us permission. That's great. It's even better that it's got the check mark, which means we'll be able to click remember this decision. We're going to click allow. And then Microsoft XPS document writer comes back. That document writer is the value of qz.printers.getdefault, which is fantastic. So what you just saw was successful signing in C Sharp using page methods. Now I'm going to refresh this just to prove to you we can get that XPS document writer without clicking any dialogues at all. And there we go. So that's it. I know it's not the same as the other tutorials. We don't have the full-blown sample.html with our demo code, but because of the way that .NET has its, its, its code that it authors for you, we figured this would be a much better example for those leveraging .NET. And uh, I hope that this tutorial helped you out. I hope this got signing working in your environment. Um, as always, subscribe to our channel, click like, 
And uh, if you have any feedback, you can leave it in the comments. If you're a premium subscriber, you can email us, support at qz.io. If you're not a premium subscriber, but you're still having some issues with this, we have a community mailing list. Just go to qz.io slash support, and you can type right in there. It does require a Google account, and it'll fire it off to our uh, support staff, and we'll try to help you out. 